everyone and good evening. Thank you so much for joining us from all the different places in the world and welcome. Uh, we are starting our webinar, Participatory Video in Peace Building, Lessons Learned from Occupied Palestinian Territories and Kyrgyzstan. So the outline for today is the following. First, uh, a brief introduction, and um, then we will talk about lessons learned from Palestine. And uh, then we will talk about successful adaptation of the methodology in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, as a case study, we will use the Cameras Enhanced project. You will hear quite a lot about it today. Uh, and uh, we plan uh, to have a webinar for about one hour. Yeah. About 30, 40 minutes uh, will be the presentation and the rest will be dedicated to your questions. Please keep your questions to the end and uh, we will try to answer as much as possible. So our speakers today, um, we have uh, Lucy Nuseba, the founder and executive chair in Middle East Nonviolence and Democracy, based in East Jerusalem. Uh, she's a very active member of GPAC, and I bet some of you know her already. She's uh, the chair of GPAC Improving Practice Working Group, member of Peace Education Working Group, and uh, generally quite an active member of our network. Uh, Fadia Salahedin uh, works closely with Lucy in the same organization. Uh, not only is she participatory video coordinator and trainer, she is also a famous journalist and filmmaker and has won quite a lot of awards and uh, participated in international contests. Mm -hmm. from Kyrgyzstan is working as PR manager at the Foundation for Tolerance International, implementing partner in the project Cameras Enhance, about which, as I promised, you will hear a bit more today. And uh, uh, on top of that, she's also a famous uh, feminist activist in Central Africa. And in case you were wondering who is talking right now, this is me. My name is Katerina Grinyuk. Uh, I am the coordinator of the project. And uh, if you click on this link here, you can read a bit more about me on GPAC's website. Uh, so what is GPAC? Here is another link to GPAC website, which is a very useful website with a lot of good information. Uh, very briefly, uh, this is the member-led network founded in 2003, and uh, it is uh, the network of civil society organizations working on conflict prevention. At GPAC, we really believe that uh, uh, prevention is uh, much, much better and uh, easier and more efficient and cheaper to deal with than uh, the uh, consequences of the armed conflict. So that's why we do promote the shift uh, from reaction to prevention. The GPAC network globally consists of 15 regional networks of local organizations, and uh, these regional networks are represented in international steering group. And since the network is really member-led, the international steering group is the one that determines our global priorities and actions. Here is the map of the world, and you can see different regions of GPAC. <clears throat> and interestingly enough, uh, both uh, the MENA region and the Central Asian region are here in the gray color. And these are the two regions we will be focusing on today. Uh, so we will talk about Palestine and Kyrgyzstan. And you can see the two regions they belong to here in gray. Uh, and uh, now a few words about the project that uh, gathered all these great speakers together today. Uh, the name of the project is Cameras Enhanced Transformation and Empowerment of Kyrgyzstani Girls and Boys. Uh, it is based on the participatory video methodology. Yeah. <clears throat> During the period from February 2018 until October 2019, uh, more than 128 participants actually uh, in uh, 16 schools in four different regions of Kyrgyzstan uh, were making participatory videos. At least 32 were produced, but in reality actually much more uh, because children got so excited <laughs> with the project and development of the videos. And then they continue still up until today. 
And uh, uh, during this project, the participants learned to formulate common messages to decision makers on different levels. Uh, the project allowed them to create opportunities uh, for uh, reconciliation within their communities, revision of various stereotypes, including gender stereotypes. And uh, the young participants, they were divided equally uh, by gender, by rural and urban territories, and also ethnic minorities were included. Uh, the project was implemented uh, mostly by Foundation for Tolerance International, our great member of GPAC in Kyrgyzstan, and uh, <clears throat> also with the support of uh, GPAC Foundation here in The Hague, where I work, and uh, a Middle East Nonviolence and Democracy, the speakers from which you will hear today, uh, were also partners in, uh, of, the, of this project, uh, plus real-time methodology, uh, real-time video from UK, who are originators from this methodology. And the project was supported by the United Nations Peace Building Fund. Um, uh, just yeah, one more thing. I wanted to show you uh, the website. Again, GPAC website, of course, uh, where you can read a bit more about this project and a uh, very useful thing. There are the links to the videos which were produced by children. Uh, we will have uh, no time today to watch them, but I really encourage you to do it later. They're really great. <laughs> children did a really good job. And now, um, in frames of this project, uh, in the end, we have produced uh, the publication. Participatory video in peace building lessons learned from occupied Palestinian territories and Kyrgyzstan, uh, which can be also downloaded from the same GPAC website here. And here is the Russian version. What I really encourage you to do is have much more videos than the ones we will talk about today. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice week. And um, now I will pass the word to Lucy, whom I introduced in the very beginning, just to remind you a little bit uh, how she looks. Here she is, a beautiful, smiling lady. And uh, this is Fadia, of course, and uh, accidentally I'm in the picture also. Uh, this was uh, Kyrgyzstan. We are together with the teachers uh, starting the project in 2018. So now over to Katarina for the introduction and for showing such a, a nice picture to remind us all of the amazing time we had in Kyrgyzstan with uh, you and the trainers and FTI. Um, I would like to start by giving a very brief summary of what participatory video is. Why is it participatory video, not just video? It's participatory because there are two elements that really involve participation. Um, the playback and the feedback. The way that participants are trained during the training involves them taking turns behind and in front of the camera and then watching themselves on a screen and discussing and analyzing what they see on the screen and also It's difficult to do, but also very empowering as it helps people understand more about their image and therefore come to terms with their self-image and raise their self-awareness. And through this, they become empowered. This element of participation is essential to participatory video. There are many forms of interactive games and the actual training is done very much hands-on with a large uh, video camera, not with a mobile phone. We've tried it with mobile phones and it didn't work so well. It half worked. But it really helps to have a camera where people take turns and where they watch the playback. Another element that is extremely participatory 
is developing storyboards together. That's taking a story, writing on pieces of paper, drawing how each element of the film they would like to make will take place. And this involves a lot of discussion and agreement and understanding of the different roles involved in making a film. So this again is extremely participatory. Since the uh, process depends also on uh, interactive games, it also depends on discussions like filming chat shows or interviews. And this, the discussions that take place during the process enable the participants to really go in depth around matters that concern them. So they end up with in-depth discussions and increased self-awareness and increased democratic capability and awareness of roles and responsibilities in any process. So this is why it is participatory at this stage. And once the films are made, we organize feedback sessions where the films are shown within the participants community and then within a wider community and then eventually to policymakers. And this is again involving participation at each stage. Ideally, we make a film about the, um, these feedback sessions. The only thing that we don't do is uh, in camera, well, we don't do uh, editing for the participants. They do the editing in camera as much as possible so that the work of an editor would be minimal and they can participate in that by watching, giving advice. But editing is a different skill, so it's difficult to include even with 15 or 16 days of workshops, which is the ideal for this approach. Next, please. Um, we started working with this a long time ago when we first established MEND, which is based in East Jerusalem. Uh, working essentially with nonviolence and with media to counteract the negative stereotypes of Palestinians and to rebuild self-esteem, community, identity, co cohesion among the Palestinian community. We've worked a lot with schools, with youth, and we explore innovative approaches through media such as radio drama and one of the first methodologies we used was participatory video. Next, please. Um, what effectively be adapted to a completely different context? I think uh, this this can be said across the board. We. video who had developed participatory video and we invited them to train our coordinators who then trained teachers in schools and people in England real time had worked as community activists and we figured this was relevant for Palestinians that it would be a really good tool for non-violence and what we have found is that it works for nonviolence, for peace building, for building bridges of understanding at every level. Our first project was with girls' schools and teachers, and that is what, in fact, the uh, Kyrgyzstan project was modeled on. We worked with municipalities. We worked with a group of women that included even some uh, police women, and we worked with youth groups. But none of these early projects involved the feedback loops. We only started with the feedback showings when we started working with a project uh, for marginalized women that was aimed to influence the uh, United Nations regarding the Sustainable Development Goals to show the importance of participation. We were part of a large project called Participate and our films were shown UN and to UNICEF 
where they had uh, a lot of impact. The audience actually wept when they saw these, saw these very short films. The power of the films is in their authenticity. They're not someone making a film about the situation of marginalized Palestinian women in the West Bank. These were the women themselves talking and making the films that they wanted to make. And this is, I think, where the power lies, as you'll see when you see the films from Kyrgyzstan, or if you look at men's website and see some of our films also. Uh, so now I'll hand uh, to my colleague, uh, Fadia, who has been doing a lot of the training. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Thank you, uh, uh, Katrina. Uh, also, we work a lot of the projects using participatory video mythology. Uh, we work with uh, Algeb. Village. Uh, and uh, this is يعني, like a marginalized area. Uh, the women uh, in Aljib and in Nabi Samuel trained uh, on the participatory video. And uh, during this uh, train, uh, training, they produced a personal and uh, a personal stories. Uh, so they choose uh, to talk about uh, their issues and their uh, personal stories related them and related to their uh, community. Uh, I will uh, يعني, uh, talk quickly about the subject. Uh, the women uh, work a documentary film about uh, Nabi Samuel. Um, they talk about the situation in this uh, village. It's uh, near Jerusalem, but the people who live in, in this village are not allowed to go to Jerusalem because they have a West Bank ID. Uh, and in this documentary film, uh, one of our participants, we follow her and filming with, with her when she passed the checkpoint. And already we uh, uh, still the camera record, uh, but the soldier يعني, tried to uh, um, stop the camera and try to take the camera from us already. But she tried uh, to uh, يعني, pass the, 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 the checkpoint. Uh, this is in uh, Nabi Samuel. Uh, in Algeb, the woman also uh, chose to uh, choose a topic related uh, them. Uh, one of participants uh, live in uh, this area, and uh, 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 half of them uh, held uh, West Bank ID, and uh, another uh, members of the family held uh, Jerusalem ID. So she made a film about this story and she يعني, made a film about they can't be together all the time. Some people stay in Jerusalem and another people go to uh, stay in uh, West Bank. Um, another uh, uh, film produced by this uh, project uh, يعني, uh, talked about um, uh, uh, يعني, if, if, if one of our participants tried to do a party about her birthday and she invited her friends, but they um, can't come because they have a checkpoint in her village. Uh, uh, and in 1918, we worked also in Shafat refugee camp. Uh, we work a Voices of Women project. We uh, uh, trained six, six women uh, from the camp and uh, also produced a film related uh, to the personal and uh, uh, their issues. Uh, the woman in the camp um, chose to talk about a story about also uh, the, the, the camp and the um, problems in the camp. Uh, one of uh, our participants made a film about her dream to um, uh, still uh, do a traditional uh, uh, dance in Palestine named Dabka, and but when she grew up, their family and their society uh, not allowed uh, to continue. Um, another uh, project uh, from another يعني, film uh, under this uh, project uh, about the woman live in the camp and she work and recycling. She uh, recycling anything to do the camp more beautiful. Uh, 
um, and also we have another project it's a, a, a daily project the name of the project daily uh, we trained uh, a media student and teacher uh, to tell their story uh, on mobile phone uh, uh, the aim to this uh, project to analyze of what these stories can tell us about the students and the education system. Uh, we also, under this uh, project, give them a training uh, in the gender and in uh, non-violence and human rights and social media. And also we give them a training uh, how to edit uh, this, uh, this story. Uh, recently, we finished a project about the uh, uh, gender. We also use a participatory video methodology. Uh, the participant from um, Colombia refugee camp it's in Ramallah, this camp in Ramallah. Uh, the participant produced a form. And the, the story is about uh, uh, subject related to gender, as I said. Uh, also about this project, all this project, we did a feedback meeting. We show the film uh, in many places in Palestine, in the camp and outside in Palestine. Uh, we also uh, invite a decision maker to this feedback meeting. Uh, so, uh, in the Omiyati project, the Ministry of uh, Education uh, says we, uh, the teacher we give the training for them, they should to uh, and from this project, we, we success to give the women opportunities to choose what they want to say uh, and they choose yani, we, we like as the women become more confident and because not easy uh, for the women in Palestine to help the camera and they try to film it. so about this project uh, by using the participatory video we give them a chance to filming uh, in this area uh, also the woman uh, yani made the story not what we see the media and yani made the story as what they see the story uh, thank you thank you very much Fadia. i okay. think we need to to uh, explain to uh, end on that was a photograph of a feedback meeting in kalandia just from last week and um Sorry, sorry, uh, Katerina, please go to the next slide. That's fine. Um, and uh, at a, a national level and developed a proposal with GPAC for this. Um, and since GPAC were aware of our plans, they wondered if they could work with us to replicate this methodology in Kyrgyzstan. And that to us was, of course, really exciting. They wanted to work with schools for sustainability rather than with youth. Also schools, it's easier. You have um, participants, of course, more to hand than youth in universities. And since that had been our first project, we felt uh, very competent to engage with GPAC and with FGI and with the UNPBF on this. And uh, we very quickly developed a proposal and a project with them. And we worked particularly on the training of the coordinators and of the teachers so that it could really be continued. One of the things we always hope for is that the methodology will continue with the people who've been trained. And the fact that FDI chose to do it in schools, I think has, has proved excellent. There was, of course, a lot of preparation needed, many Skype calls. We actually met in Armenia. I met uh, Tajika from FDI for the first time. Though I'd actually let myself drop from that group in between. It was a nice reconnection. 
And we worked out then the timeline, the methodology. Also, I wrote up uh, quite a lot of explanation about how the games work and how to prepare. There are many, many details that need to be taken into account. It's an excellent methodology. It's very replicable, but it does take a lot of work. And the more care that is put into the preparation, as with many things, the more it really repays in terms of the empowerment and the skills of the participants. The most challenging elements were actually the time. The project was uh, quite compressed. And so therefore also the training had to be compressed. And um, again, in the original model with MEND, we had planned for a lot of nonviolence training and gender awareness. FTI also uh, took the time to do tolerance and gender training at the beginning. So that compressed the time even more for the participatory video element. But we did it. We worked out how to do a, a chain of training that could be worked in that time. Here are some of the participants in Kyrgyzstan doing an interactive game which is a chat show two of the participants are filming and three are participating in a chat show i believe about education so this is the kind of way then they build up more and more conversations because remember they also watch this on the screen afterwards so we brought the trainers from real-time video this was really important we didn't want to be copying a copy we figured that they were such experts and uh, it was worth everything to have them do the initial training for FTI. But we had also by then quite a lot of experience and also experience in adapting the methodology. In fact, in doing it with, with the schools and the teachers. So it was an excellent combination that we worked. I feel this is something that even the way we replicated, for instance, could be replicated by others, that the combination is, is an excellent way of doing it. We added, for instance, normally real-time start with just people taking turns with the camera and the microphone. But we began with two days just to explain to people how to turn on the camera, how to set it up, put it on the tripod, put it away. Very basic introduction. But I think this helped the more interactive filming work go more quickly. This is something that we've added and that went very well. And then there was really intensive training. Normally a training would be perhaps five or six hours. I think these were more like eight hours every day, but it worked. We um, all enjoyed it, everyone learned. And um, there was a lot of uh, fun had by everyone. I think Katerina and Fadia will uh, back me up on this and anyone from FTI who was part of that training really just enjoyed all the, um, the dramatic elements in it, trying things out, trying filming in the street, making a small drama that they then filmed. They, uh, they enjoyed it. And that's one of the best ways to learn. So then when we handed over to Kyrgyzstan, we gave them again written notes, summarizing all the training that um, Clive from Real Time had given so that they would have that as a base. And um, really we felt uh, extremely proud to be part of uh, the beginning of such a, a, a project. And again, I would just like to, before I hand over to, to Beggy, I would like to emphasize that with a good methodology, with all good educational methods, it can be adapted successfully to a completely different context. Kyrgyzstan and Palestine and England are all different, but it works well in all of them. Hi, hi everybody. Um, thank you, Fadia and Lucy, for the great information, and Katerina to organizing this webinar. Uh, so my uh, presentation will be about how we adapt PV methodology in our context, and I will quickly introduce um, you to every step that we did 
in implementing this project. And I will give <coughs> you a bit of information about Kyrgyzstan and about FTI. So um, Kyrgyzstan is a country with a potential uh, for conflicts because um, for our uh, little story uh, from the date of our independence, we had, um, it has been marked uh, by various internal tensions along ethnic, gender, um, social and urban rural divides. Um, for example, in 2010, um, ethnic clashes between um, Kyrgyz and Uzbeks and Osh, and this um, uh, conflict particularly affected uh, women, youth and other vulnerable groups. And this situation uh, made our uh, foundation to pay more attention to a, a gendered approach in order to um, contribute to, to the development of women and youth uh, lives locally and to build a peaceful country. Mm. Katerina, can you please stay to the next? Yeah. So, uh, uh, and also um, in about the youth, young people, um, a lot of them, they feel exclusion from the um, political, economic and social processes in the country and um, FTI working. Uh, so because of this problem, and uh, we are trying to make <clears throat> positive, uh, positive changes in Kyrgyzstan and in Central Asia. Uh, yeah, so about my... From the Peace March for, from, um, for the Women's Rights last year, and FTI was the, one of the organizers of this peace walk. Yeah, so next. So, um, so in this project, we uh, focused um, in, on increasing young people's voice at the local, national, and international changes uh, to bring a new insights to the gender roles or norms or other issues. And um, at the beginning of the project, as uh, Katerina already mentioned, uh, we made an agreement with the Ministry of Education uh, in Kyrgyzstan. And their uh, support was very important, especially when we started to work in, with the uh, local municipalities and other officials. <coughs> and then, uh, so, the, so now we are just um, on the steps of the project. So, the first, we start with the selection um, process and research. Um, yeah, so uh, in this process, we chose uh, com communities uh, with a history of conflict and or marked uh, potential for conflict. And in those areas, we uh, uh, selected uh, participants by uh, submission of the apl application form, um, a group exercise, and then individual interviews. Uh, and then after that, we also organized a baseline survey uh, to find out their perception regarding values, identity, um, local politics, gender, or other national issues, um, nationality issues. Uh, for example, a lot of them, they, um, they had the, um, stereotypical thinking uh, or uh, prejudices um, against uh, other ethnicities or religion or culture. And for example, one of our for uh, no reason. And later when we were getting uh, feedback from them at the end of the project, uh, he was saying that he his attitude about this uh, people changed and he even uh, have an um, Indian friend now to play football. Order to, uh, can you put the, yeah. So um, in order, order to effectively um, introduce PV methodology in Kyrgyzstan, uh, it was necessary to, 
adapted to the local context. So our idea to pre provide uh, training for trainers, uh, TOT for three. organized um, trainings uh, about PV methodology for the students and our teachers was uh, co-trainers co -trainer, co in this uh, process and uh, next because we didn't want them to give a lot of information about the methodolo methodology uh, in one workshop so yeah probably it would be hard for them or difficult because it's a professional camera and it's very hard to deal and and uh, so instead of like a um, week or 10 days uh, workshop we did it in two months of um, practical and team building workshops and um, these sessions were facilitated by our project staff and teachers um, yeah, so, so, and in, in our context, um, we at uh, video editing trainings, um, uh, trainings because, um, uh, because outsourcing the video editing service um, as um, it was done in, uh, by our colleagues in Palestine, occupied the Palestinian territories. Uh, was not logically possible because uh, the project was implemented in 16 different areas in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, so, and also uh, video editing. In their ability to be independent, independently create uh, high quality videos. And this training was also uh, good for the sustainability of the project at the end. And um, so, next slide. Uh -huh. And survey um, revealed a lack of um, critical knowledge among young people. Uh, so, by forming a a common understanding of peace and conflicts, as well as a um, positive served as a great aid to the PV methodology and peace building process in this project. Um, um, I would like to add that uh, we also um, we also had um, trainings on how to lobby online and offline uh, by organizing workshops on social media and advocacy. And uh, it, was, um, it was very useful, um, especially for the feedback uh, session and uh, helped uh, young participants to spread messages uh, more and to reach uh, the audience, yeah. Um, so about the feedback sessions, um, uh, the, um, it's, it was very important part of uh, this project. Um, and we organize it in a local level, I mean, in the village. Level. It was a platform where young people invited their parents, school administration, local uh, municipalities, deputies, or other activists, and their um, or other young people. Um, all together, they discussed um, the problem or situation uh, showed uh, in their short movies, and they discussed. Uh, that they were writing action plans, including what every person can do in their level, uh, what uh, children children can do, what 
uh, local municipality can, can do in this uh, situation or what parents can do. So uh, <clears throat> the other thing that we add to the project was uh, follow-up meetings. Um, follow-up meetings were Our plans did not um, remain on paper. So a lot of problems were actually solved. And uh, one of our success story I will show you later in my presentation. And the final uh, thing is that um, in general, uh, mm, uh, there is a lot of project uh, results. So I didn't want to, to stop in every, every single stuff that we did. But in general, we just wanted to give them more um, examples that uh, young people can also solve the problems. And now um, they, are, they are agents of changes because um, they have uh, set themselves the goal of showing problems to the right people on the right level and uh, to the peers um, using appropriate approaches. Uh, first of all, they um, struggled with their own fears or um, very shy or uh, embarrassed at the beginning of the project, but later they did a great job uh, to change themselves. And uh, secondly, they influenced each other. And the other uh, success, success of this project is uh, sustainability because PR, uh, PV um, approach uh, in Kyrgyzstan has a clear structure. So that's why young people now still working and developing their initiative groups by inviting new participants and teaching them and also teachers as a mentors uh, is very important in this um, uh, sustainability uh, of the project. So uh, next thing that I wanted to show is that uh, video from our project. So Помнишь, <gülüyor> Жолдордо <gülüyor> А можно, если мы с сегодняшнего, завтрашнего дня уже подойдем заявки, да, и в течение двух недель нам поставят в течение, да, поставят. Да, 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 да,
Um, for your, the end of the project and the video about um, climate change and peace and then the uh, last year uh, September they were also online participating in the global action for the climate change and uh, yeah thank you for your attention and if you have any questions feel free to ask Thank you so much, our dear presenters, for this uh, impressive and uh, inspirational speeches. And uh, now the floor is uh, open to you, our participants. So please come up with the questions. Uh, good morning from my end. Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Joseph uh, Jimmy Sangakwa. I work for a local organization called Talking Drum Studio. Mm -hmm. And we are looking forward to building partnerships, especially with network organizations like yours, working in a peace building field. So I wanted to inquire whether there are set criteria for joining your, your, your network as a member. And if there's any opportunity to share those basic uh, criteria that people need to look forward to. Basically, GPAC is an open network which welcomes uh, all the organizations working in peace building. So if you're working in peace building, you're very welcome to join GPAC. <laughs> Thank you. That's what we do. Great. Perfect. Okay. Other questions? Hello. Hello. Well, my name is Lawa. So, uh, I mean, say well done uh, to the presenters for uh, nice work they do, uh, especially in Kazakhstan. And I'm particularly impressed with how uh, they've been able to use, I mean, participatory video to uh, push for youth leadership uh, and agency. In, uh, a day when some kind of um, challenges encountered, especially in the course of working with um, our government in those um, in those countries where it was uh, implemented. government uh, and uh, um, both on the um, level of the national feedback session and also in course of the project big you're muted probably uh, Katerina, can you uh, repeat it again? Because it was some problems with my okay. connection. Okay. So the question was about cooperation with the governments. And uh, we know that uh, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, you mentioned it a little bit, um, it was quite successful. So if you could tell a little bit more about cooperation with the government during the national feedback session and also in course of the project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are, um, so our organizations has, um, a good connection with the government because uh, we are always trying to include them to our projects and um, so the our agreement was that um, at the beginning we just went to the ministry of education and then we just present our idea how we were on, we want to work with the school children and the thing is that they liked it and uh, in this way we made an agreement and in the agreement was like it was written that uh, what every um, sites are doing uh, i mean what we are doing as an fti and then what the um, what kind of uh, support uh,
And especially in our reality in Kyrgyzstan, it's uh, better to start from the up to the down because, uh, because then it's a lot of work to go to every village and talk to every local um, authorities. And it's better to make it like in the up and then just go down and then we already have an agreement and then we just start to work in the field. Thank you so much, Bigimai, and thank you, uh, Laval, for the question. Uh, was it completely could I, answered? <laughs> could, could I just say a brief yes, word? Definitely. Um, definitely. Palestine, it's very different in size from Kyrgyzstan. People have much easier access to the government. And actually, from the very start, we worked closely with the Ministry of Education in the Palestinian Authority to work with schools. And one of the projects Fadia mentioned, they have actually asked if we could do a project training teachers to get this throughout schools in Palestine. All we need is the funding and we could, uh, we could do this. We also worked with the Ministry of Women's Affairs very closely on the gender projects. There's been a lot of support and interest from the Palestinian Authority. Thank you so much, Lucy. Um, any more questions? I, I see one question, question Andre. yeah, in the chat. <laughs> Andre, hello. Uh -huh. I see you okay. sent a question uh, through the chat. And, you know, it is used. Real-time video give trainings. They've done, I think, quite a lot of work in Kenya and in Bangladesh. Um, there was also, it's also been developed, I believe, in, um, maybe in the Soviet Union, when it was, and uh, used there. It does exist in other places, but I think what we did at MEND and what FTI have done, as you heard uh, so, so excellently presented just now, is we've added components and really tried to make it much more than uh, it started off as being, to really have an impact at the policy level. And, to, to empower people, to create agents and create change. Does that answer you? I, I think we don't have... But we would love it. Yep. So if there are ideas for partnerships among our participants of today's webinar, so maybe um, there will be plans for other countries as well. That would be wonderful, actually. And the whole um, process of uh, replicating and adapting is very interesting. It's also really enriching. It enriches the process. And Bigima, you wanted to mention something also, right? Oh, no, no, no. I just wanted to say that there is questions. Okay. On the yeah, and there there. is uh, indeed one more question from Rebecca Smith. Um, the, she says, we have used a similar methodology in the Philippines as a monitoring tool. It developed into something very powerful, but we are struggling to maintain momentum. How did you gain donor interest in such a project? Maybe Lucy, you could uh, say a few words. <laughs> Um, it's been our biggest challenge, Rebecca, actually, <laughs> really. Our initial project was funded through UNV, through United Nations Volunteers and the Japanese government. And we couldn't continue it because there was a, a, a whole uh, uprising that broke out here with violence for five years and no one would give us continuing funding, although we had a lot of interest. And it lost its momentum and it's only come back really through um, our work with gender, because now some donors have seen that it's, it's a, a powerful tool for raising awareness about gender. And through that, GPAC actually have been amazing in supporting us and in helping us to um, really uh, advertise for it. But um, so I think this is how you gain donor interest. You work with an organization like GPAC, like PACs, who have been very supportive by those that actually appreciate the value, who can help with, even with small projects and build partnerships. Partnerships are a good way to go. 
Thank you so much, Lucy. Sounds also inspiring. So any more questions? Katerina uh, writes, I'd like to know if you encountered any difficulties regarding security and whether there were any misunderstandings between the participants. How did you resolve them? So maybe this time we could start from Bigimai. Gemai, are you with us? Okay, maybe we could start uh, again from Palestine then. I'm sure there were also some interesting cases there, especially regarding security. I'm not sure I fully understand what you're asking. I mean, for us, a lot of our work was with women and they had a problem just with themselves about going out and being seen to be filming in the street. There's a lot of uh, social and traditional pressures that they had to overcome in order to do that. But there wasn't, I mean, regarding security, how, how do you mean? Katerina, maybe you could uh, explain your question a bit. No? Yeah, I was uh, I was asking about your security and security of uh, the participants, uh, also uh, those women in Pal Palestine, as you said, um, it was difficult for them to present themselves in. Filming in some places or something like that. Um, maybe Fadi would like to help with this, but we, we work very much from inside Palestinian society. And we work often where we are asked and invited. We've always been only working on nonviolence, for instance, when we've been invited to give trainings. So we are always welcome where we work so that uh, we, we would not have security problems. Problems. It is. A, it's a local organization, MEND, not an international organization. Thank so. you. I could say maybe a few words about Kyrgyzstan. So first of all, uh, between the participants, uh, there was uh, one interesting case uh, in one of the communities, in one of the schools. Uh, in the beginning, uh, boys uh, did not want uh, to give girls an opportunity to use cameras. Uh, they, they were saying that, oh, these girls, they don't understand anything about technical equipment. Uh, they are not able to deal with it. This is definitely a boy's job. And then with the help of the mediators, and that's why it is always important in every training, in every group to have this mediator to help the group. Um, they, uh, they were sort of forced to exchange the roles and uh, girls uh, also had to <laughs> take some video equipment. And at some point, boys started noticing that actually they're doing quite well. They can do quite a lot some, sometimes. In some cases, they're even better than boys. And uh, interestingly enough, after just uh, two months of uh, working with the group, uh, within the group, uh, the boys suggested uh, to make a video about uh, gender-based discrimination. <laughs> That was a very interesting case. And in terms of security, I know that uh, one video um, which was uh, portraying um, the um, uh, ecological problems and the pollution of the river um, was quite difficult to shoot and children had to do it at night because um, it was not really appreciated that they are raising this problem. Uh, so yeah there are quite some cases like that but again good mediation is always very important thank you did, did, that, answer did that answer you katerina yes uh, that answered my questions completely fully okay. <laughs> you can write if you have anything that you'd like more explained okay thank you yeah i just wanted to ask something 
Sorry, I was a bit off. Um, uh, the, about the misunderstanding, it was more between the parents and the children. Mm -hmm. Because especially with the girls, uh, because uh, in some families, uh, the parents are um, are saying that you don't have to be filmed or you, like, you, you, you don't have to publish your photos on internet or you don't have to use the social media. So... Problem? Parents. Um, yeah, and then, so it was just like not actually work with the participants, but also with their parents, including, because uh, then our uh, staff was explaining that um, uh, there is nothing wrong that if your um, girl are participating, first of all, in the project, and then if she can be filmed or something like that. And uh, yeah, so we had more problems with the uh, participating, especially the girls, of the girls. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for this comment. Big mind. We also have comment from Mikola Gomenyuk in uh, the chat that uh, uh, he plans to present the idea of the methodology to his team and hopefully we'll try to implement it in the Caucasus region. Sounds great. Nice, yeah. Uh, I believe that uh, it's about time for us to start wrapping up and uh, maybe we have time for one last question. Does anyone have a urgent question to ask? In the chat or... No? Okay, so it seems that uh, we have covered the major points and answered the major questions. Please pay attention to these contacts here on this slide, uh, which I keep showing. And uh, please, please uh, let me to build partnerships. And thank you so much for participating in this webinar. Um, and have the great rest of the day or the evening or whenever time of the day you have now. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.